Hi, my name is Eric Melcher, and I'm the Director of Business Intelligence here at Intellinet. Today we're going to be looking at a couple examples of business intelligence within Microsoft's platform. Um, the two things we're going to be looking at is SharePoint 2010 and the business intelligence functionality that can be delivered through SharePoint, as well as how it, end users can leverage Excel to do ad hoc analysis on the desktop. So to start, we're going to look at SharePoint 2010 and performance point services within SharePoint. So what we're looking at right here is a, is a sample dashboard that shows some various content that an organization might want to use to manage their business. In the top left of the screen, you've got a scorecard. And within the scorecard, you have a, a simple KPI that's broken down by various geographic regions. So one thing to note here is that uh, for each KPI, we have an indicator which shows your progress towards your target. So you can see that for China and South America, um, we've had fairly successful months for the month of February. Whereas in Europe and North America, we're down 13% and 7% from our targets. For each of these KPIs, we can click on it and a few things happen within our dashboard. The first thing you'll notice is that a KPIs report pops up on the right hand side of the screen where you, and users can get a better understanding of what uh, uh, details there are behind this KPI. So for example, they can see what the actual values are, what the variance was, um, what the various t uh, values would be for being on target, slightly off target, or, or completely off target, so your green, yellow, or red values. So this way users can see what exactly um, defines success and, and, uh, and failure. And then lastly, we have uh, who's responsible for this particular KPI, as well as the description of the KPI. So the value here is an end user comes in, they see uh, that there's a KPI that's off, I think they can get some additional context around maybe what calculates that value so they can get a better understanding of what they can do to change that, that KPI and make it uh, turn green. Another thing you'll notice is as we click through the here, the pie chart in the bottom right hand of the screen is updating. So in this case, we're starting to do uh, um, some sort of analysis based off the KPI. So in this case, we see that Europe is uh, the most off target. When we highlight Europe, we, they, we can then uh, see within our pie chart um, which products are being sold within Europe. So now we can start uh, digging in and doing a little bit more of analysis. So we can open up the pie chart here, um, get it a little bit larger screen, and then what we can do is we can start uh, finding different pie slices and drilling into them. So in this case we could say let's look at specialty seating um, within the specialty seating product categories. Uh, we see we have non-parts and parts. We can drill into these further and get down to the actual uh, products within those categories that are being purchased. Some of the nice things here is you can you can similarly you can switch this out into a grid, and uh, and see uh, a more grid-based view of the information. And of course, all this information you could actually export to PowerPoint or Excel if you needed to. We're going to hop back to where we started. There we are. Now the last thing we're going to show within the dashboard is the ability to do a, uh, to, to do a more in-depth analysis of information. So in this case for Europe, we want to really start to analyze what's going on within our sales within Europe. We can right click on the scorecard and open up a decomposition tree. What a decomposition tree allows us to do is a root cause analysis to start to actually explore the data and understand what's going on a little better. So in this case we can see we've got our Europe region with all of our various sales reps nested below it within the sales organization. And for any of these sales reps, we could then start to do an additional analysis. We can come down here and we could say, what is sales rep 34 selling by product category? We see that this, this sales rep is selling primarily long-term care, long care beds. And again, we can drill down from product category to subcategory into the individual products that that sales rep is selling. So we can also uh, go look at various other information. We can see what the typical order source is for that sales rep. And so you can see that there's a lot of dynamic analysis that we can do within here. So that gives you some feel for some of the analytic capabilities that you can do within SharePoint 2010 leveraging performance point services. Now we're going to switch gears. We're going to go look at the capabilities of Excel to do an ad hoc analysis. So now you've gone from an end user uh, con consuming content um, that's, that's more or less predefined over the web so now being a user that has a, a question that they want to answer that, that isn't defined or, or answered by an existing dashboard, and so they want to go do their own ad hoc analysis. So what we're looking at here is just uh, Excel 2010. There's no additional plugins or features installed here to enable what we're going to be showing today. And so that what this user is going to do is they're going to create a connection to the exact same cube that the dashboard was, was showing information from. So go ahead and open up our connection. 
and connect to the cube. And now what you'll see is a pivot table interface that's showing the analysis services cube through Excel. So leveraging this information, the end user can now start to build out the analysis they want to use. So in this case, we want to do an, uh, an analysis on sales invoice, and we want to get a, an idea for the trend of sales by different business units over the past 12 months. So we're going to go ahead and select sales invoiced. We're going to scroll down. We know we want to look at this by the, the, the hierarchy of the business, by our strategic business units. So we're going to go ahead and grab those guys, and we know that we want to look at just the trade side of the business. So we've added trade, and we've, we've drilled down into that. Now we can see the various business units within the organization. I'm going to scroll down further. We know we want to do a trend over time, so we're going to go ahead and drag our fiscal date hierarchy into our columns. Now we can see our various fiscal, fiscal years at the top level of our hierarchy. So now we're just going to start tweaking this analysis. We say, well, we want to look at the current fiscal year. So we're going to fiscal 10. We want to look at this on a monthly basis. So we're going to drill down into months. We're going to go ahead and hide our years and quarters. So now we've got a fairly uh, detailed analysis here. We've got you know, our various business units. We've got all of our months laid across here. But as you can see, there's a lot of numbers here. And it's really tough to, to, to get a good understanding of what exactly is going on here. So now we're going to start to leverage some additional functionality of Excel to add a little more context and make this a little more visual for an end user to analyze. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these grand totals on the rows and columns just so that we've got uh, a little more room to work with here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage something that's a new feature for Excel 2010 called uh, spark lines. So we go over here to insert. We say we want to insert a spark line. And we tell it which data area you want to use. And we know that April, in this case, is a partial month's worth of data. This data was taken uh, halfway through April. So we're going to create our spark lines for the, for the last 12 uh, uh, complete months worth of data. So now you can see we can see uh, what our values are for April and what the trends have been for each of those business units for the past 12 months. And now we can go ahead and work on hiding all these additional columns since we have all the information they have within the spark lines. All right, so now we can see our current month's uh, sales by business unit. We can see what the trend has been over time. Now we can just do a few more formatting things to clean, up this, to clean this up and make it look a little more usable. So we can add markers and highlight our high points for our spark lines. And last but not least, we can go in here and we can uh, leverage some conditional formatting to give a little more context to these values as well. So now you can see in just a few minutes, we've been able to create a pretty, pretty nice little uh, uh, ad hoc analysis here where we can really see what the performance of the, com of the business has been for each of these business units. And then, of course, you can leverage something like Excel services to actually push this information back out to SharePoint and share it with other end users within your company. Hopefully, this quick demo has given you a feel for some of the features coming in Office 2010, both in SharePoint as well as Excel, and some of the capabilities end users will have to perform their own analysis on your business data.